So the other part of this demo is actually the README. And you can see it right here. So there's the initial setup. We need to import some data first. This is a data set we're using for the demo next week. And uh, I have actually put a little command here to do it. I'm really, uh, Calvin is LOLing. Uh, oh, that's my chatbot. Um, okay, so I need to import some data, right? So this is, there's this tarball here. And I'm going to open this up in 7-zip and open this one up. And there's a JSON file. So uh, can I uh, just drag this over here? OK, good. All right. So and then I'm going to create a bucket called, I don't know, we'll call it CRM data. Good enough for me. Let's give it 300 meg of data. That should be plenty. Now, I did not create this data set, neither did Dennis. This was a data set that was given to us uh, by some of the event organizers. Uh, it's going to be the sort of a unifying data set. It's a, I don't know if you're familiar with the term CRM, but this is a kind of a mock CRM data set that we're working with here. All right, so we've got this JSON file. And now I'm going to import it into Couchbase. So I'll get the CRM data bucket. Uh, Program files, couchbase server bin, and that's a CB import, and it's JSON data, and we're going to import it into the couchbase local cluster, and the username is administrator, password is password, very high security here, bucket name is CRM data, uh, the file name is CRM list JSON, we have to give it this file colon slash slash syntax, it's in list format. And we're going to generate a key based on the ID in each JSON data. And we're going to give it four threads. I'm not sure why four threads. That's just something Dennis threw in there. Uh, we could give it zero threads or the default, or zero threads. Zero threads wouldn't work. But we could give it the default one thread, I think. Um, now, before I run this, it's going to spit out some errors. There are 183 documents in this sample bucket that do not have an ID field in them that's named ID. Uh, but I've... I've I've checked with the organizer uh, of this uh, data set, and that's totally fine. Uh, it, we can ignore those pieces of data. Oh, what didn't, didn't it like? Unexpected argument for option F. Huh? Oh, I didn't put list. I thought I typed list. I didn't. List. There we go. So there are the errors. No big deal. 183 of them total. At the end, we should see 183. <laughs> But we should also see documents flowing into CRM data at this point. I think there's 188,000 total, something like that. There we go, 101,000 documents, 183 failed. So there we go, 101,000 documents. You can see all the documents in there. Now for our application, we're interested in mainly two documents. So these are the actual steps of the demo. We have Act 1 and Act 1 event. Okay, let's check those out. Act 1. This is a, an account. This represents a, uh, in a CRM, an account is a, a person who you're selling to or you're trying to sell to, right? Well, if, if we're, it's a sales CRM, right? It's a person whom you're trying to manage a relationship with, right? So we've got uh, just some data here. This is the, the Smith Limited account. It's a heavy equipment. And here's their, this is the person who's assigned to it. And then here are some contacts at the company and, uh, and so on, right? Um, We've also got EVT, and you know, CRM, uh, wait, what, is it EVT? Yeah, Act 1 EVT, why isn't it showing up? Huh? Is that something that's created brand new for this demo? Account, content as objects, get on account. Hmm. Well, that's a problem, because it's supposed to be in there. That was in there for when I ran it on my laptop. Act one EVT. Hmm, not good. Not great, Bob. Well, that's a problem. Because if you look here, 
this is trying to get it based on that ID or it errors out. Oh wait, is this, oh wait, hang on. Ah, okay. Okay, it does create one, all right. Okay, okay, never mind, we're fine. Okay, so there's no EV1, EVT1 yet, that there will be, okay, good, good, good. So I'm going to change this data here. That's all fine, this should be administrator and this should be password, okay. So I'm gonna create an account and then what I have is an account EVT. So this is a, a collection of events. And in a CRM, an event is, far from a CRM expert, but an event is some sort of interaction that took place between uh, you or your team and the account, right? So we made a phone call to them. We had a meeting with them. We sent them a basket of fruit. I don't, I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. I'm, I'm, I'm not in sales. I don't know this stuff. Uh, but the, you track all those events, so you know you're not annoying them too much. Or hey, did someone send them a basket of fruit yet or not? Oh yeah, it says here in Assyria and we sent them some fruit. I don't know why I'm imagining fruit being sent around as as a major sales tool, but I'm just using it as an example. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we're going to do in this application, we're going to have uh, an account which already exists, right? And we're going to create an event. And that event's going to have a type field, an account ID, and an events. This is an array of all those events that happened. And it's going to start out empty. Okay. Uh, so if I go ahead and run this program, hopefully it should run, it's going to uh, create this transaction. So this is the new part of the, of the transaction, uh, the asset transaction part, right? This is all standard bucket uh, cluster collection stuff in Couchbase. We create a new event that's outside the transaction. It's totally on its own. We just do it one time during setup. Then I set up this transactions. So I create a transaction. Uh, I don't I call it transactions with an S. It doesn't matter. We're creating a transaction and for which cluster. And we have a config builder we create. And we specify durability level. Now, what Calvin's done here is that we're just running single node locally. For the demo at Oracle, we may want to change this to a different durability level. And um, we have some options here of what kind of durability level to enforce. And for a transaction on multiple nodes, a true distributed transaction, not, not one like my single node server here, but a, a real cluster, we'd probably need to specify something other than none for durability level. We'll leave it at none for now. That's something I actually got to bring up later today in one of our uh, meetings. So if you notice here, this transactions has this run command, and this is basically just a lambda in here. Again, squint hard, it looks like C sharp. I know it uses a dash instead of a uh, uh, equals, right, equals uh, for the arrow, but squint a little hard, it looks like it. And then inside this transaction run, all this stuff in here is going to be run inside, it's gonna be run atomically. That's all gonna be part of a transaction. Again, this is how you think of it as a maker. Now behind the scenes, there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on um, that as a developer, you really don't need to keep track of too closely. Uh, at least that's the idea. Uh, but the two important things here is that we're getting the account and we're getting the event. This is all inside the transaction. We're making some changes. So I'm gonna update the account to increment the number of follow-ups. The so the follow-ups being the events. We're going to set the date to right now. And I'm also going to change the events to add that event. And my first event is, hey, what's up? So maybe we'll call this initial email, all right? And then it's going to replace those documents. And that all happens inside this transaction. So if anything fails at any point here, it's gonna roll it all back to the state it was at before. And we'll actually demonstrate that. And then we'll print out errors if something goes wrong. Okay, so let's try them. I, got, I think I have all the correct stuff in there. Let's run this puppy. How, do you think Java developers, any of them use Visual Studio Code for day to day? Um, I'm guessing they're mostly using IntelliJ or Eclipse uh, or something along those lines. Um, but I mean, someone must be using it, uh, Visual Studio Code because there's a, a supported plugin for it. Okay. So again, Java, I don't know if this is just this demo or what, but extremely verbose with all the logging to the console of what's going on. But what you can kind of see here is that um, 
there's, there's no error. Everything happened uh, as we expect it to. Um, so the transaction went off. We can actually verify that. So let's go to account one and we can see that last interaction, this is today's date, these fields weren't here and we have one follow-up. So I go to account one EVT, that document now exists and you can see it has the, hey, what's up initial email. All right, so we're doing well here. And let's just uh, take this another step further and uh, send basket of fruit. I don't know. We're going to send that fruit basket. So again, this is we, we'd expect this to add another event to here. So this event array would increase by one. And we'd expect the follow-ups here to increase to two. And the last interaction to that to date to also change. So actually, if you look, this last interaction date there, that should match the one in the other document. So let's paste it in to compare it side by side. And you can see that they do match. So that's perfect. So we're going to do another transaction, sent basket of fruit. So again, we will run this demo. Right click and run. The raw speed of Java is just blowing my mind right now. Or maybe I did something wrong. Nope. <laughs> just the raw speed of Java. Okay, and if we go back over here to our document, and we should see now that we have two events. Hey, what's up? Initial email, sent basket of fruit. Those are the first two steps of any successful sales transaction, all right? And initiate contact, send fruit. Oh, I, I, I should have switched type to something else, right? Should be should be a, a type called fruit. <laughs> yeah, this should have been fruit. Anyway, so if that's if I ever become a, your salesman, if you're going to hire me for sales, just know I'm going to send lots of fruit out to people. You don't know, maybe it works. Uh, okay, and then over here, and we look at our uh, account document. Follow-ups is now number two, and the latest interaction was here. Now, you might wonder, why would I do this? Uh, why wouldn't I just query the other document? And you absolutely could do that. But this will also, this could be a performance issue where we're sort of copying some data here. So we don't have to do a query to roll this number of follow-ups up every time or find the last interaction every time, right? We can just have our transaction updated in a different document. That's going to be a modeling decision on your part. I'm really just trying to demonstrate transactions here. Now, all I've showed you is happy path so far, and that's all well and good, but uh, wouldn't we rather have something go wrong? So I'm going to throw an exception here, and this will demonstrate the rollback that happens, right? So uh, let's just say uh, sent a second basket of fruit, this time with no... Uh, berries because they are allergic <laughs> a lot of a lot of fruit happening and i made it the correct type this time okay so what i expect to happen is we're going to go through the same transaction we're going to get those two account documents we're going to update them uh, with a new interaction and we're going to replace those documents however something's going to go wrong we're going to throw an exception we're just going to simulate some something went wrong and by default uh, if an exception is thrown, it's unhandled inside this transaction, that's going to trigger a rollback. We could also probably say ctx.rollback. We could manually uh, specify a rollback. Uh, and also at the end here, we could also uh, explicitly uh, order a commit as well. But that is also implied. Um, again, you might want to add those depending on your situation. So what I expect to happen now is we're going to run this. An exception is going to happen. And... We're going to look at EVT, see that, uh, yeah, this has two. If our rollback doesn't work, this, this, will, this may have three instead. We don't want that. And uh, if we go back to account one, if our, if our rollback doesn't happen, if, it, if a rollback does happen, this will still say two. This will still say uh, ending in 608. If it doesn't roll back, something goes wrong, this might be a different number, a different date. Okay, so that's the success criteria. We'll run this again. And again, let's just sit back and witness the raw speed of Java blasting its way through the enterprise. Explosion sound effect. 
Lasers. Car engine. Vroom, vroom. Okay. All right. So you can see we've got exception here. Uh, here's the exception uh, somewhere. Well, I mean, there's some other exceptions that are happening. Uh, yeah, here's a legal state exception emulating a rollback. Okay, so if we go back to here to our data, retrieve docs, still says two, still says 608. We're in good shape. Our rollback worked. Still, says, still has two events here. All right, pretty cool. Now, uh, 